Hey, what's up guys? So in our last video, we spent about a good hour installing SCCM in our environment. And now, well, now we have to configure it and put it to use. So in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna start off going into our administration tab and then clicking on the hierarchy configuration. And from here, we're gonna wanna add our discovery method and our boundaries. So we'll start off with the discovery groups. We'll go ahead and enable that discovery group and we'll go to add and then location. Okay, so here we're gonna click on the browse and for my environment right now, I'm just gonna set it to home. Um, I'll just scale it down a little bit for your environment. If you wanna get everybody in the entire domain, you would set it at the root of the domain. That's fine. All right, and for the simple name, we're just gonna call it home. It's fine with us. And if you wanted to specify an account, you can do that here. Uh, for now, we'll just use the system account. That's fine, okay. So we're gonna enable the discovery and and under the options, uh, we're not gonna click anything there and we will want to run it as soon as possible. Okay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the system discovery properties. We wanna enable this. This is gonna discover all computers within our organization. So we'll go ahead and click on the path. In my environment, like I said, I'm just gonna do the my home OU. Um, in your environment, if you're doing this on production, you'd obviously wanna do it at the root of the domain, but for demo purposes, I'll set it to there. And we're gonna use a system account. We're not gonna be using any attributes. And for the options here, we want to check the only discover computers that have logged on to the domain within a period of time. We want to set that to 90. That basically means that if a computer was has not been active for 90 days, then it's going to it's not going to catch that. OK, so now we're in the. Users. Discovery method, uh, we're going to do the same thing we did with computers. We're going to set it to that root and then the polling schedule and the attributes we're going to leave default. We'll go ahead and click OK to that. OK. And from here, now we're going to want to set our boundaries. We'll go ahead and create a boundary for right now. We're going to set this to. Uh, let's go ahead and call it site one boundary. For the type, we want to set it for the Active Directory site. So it uses the sites and services. And for the name, we'll go ahead and select it as soon as it's done loading. And we'll select the home because that's our home site. In sites and services, we have the home uh, site. So that's fine with that. Boundary groups, we haven't created those yet. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. All right, now let's go into the boundary groups. We'll go ahead and right click that and click create boundary group. And for this, we'll go ahead and call this uh, US. Okay, we're gonna add our home boundary that we set up. And for the reference, we're gonna set this boundary to the my uh, pack one site. And we wanna set our both site servers to that site. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go into the sites. And here is where we have the option to either set up our client installation or maintenance or our site. Um, settings for now we're going to go ahead and click on site or client configuration settings we're going to want to set an existing account I'm sorry a new account um, in my domain I created an SCC admin that's a local admin on or that's going to be a local admin on all machines we'll go ahead and put in the password for that okay and then we'll go into installation properties. And for our installation properties, we're gonna add FSP and then the SCCM server name. So in my case, it's gonna be pack-SCCM01. And that FSP is the fallback server. We'll click OK to that. All right, now let's go into the site maintenance. And here, here's an option that I actually do suggest you guys do. Um, we want to delete any inactive client discovery data. 
So if a client has not been active for a certain amount of days, uh, normally it's either 90 or 180, it go ahead and deletes that information from SCCM so you don't have a lot of stale accounts. All right, so now we're gonna go into the client settings and we're gonna edit the default client settings. We'll start at the top with background intelligence transfer bits. Uh, nothing to do there. Cloud services, nothing. Client policy, nothing there either. Okay. For the computer agent, we're gonna wanna set, uh, we don't have a default website yet, but our organization name displayed in Software Center, we're gonna go ahead and call that the sysadmin channel. Once we deploy the software, I'll show you guys where exactly you see that. Okay. We're not using endpoint protection as of now. We'll go ahead and continue on. All right, so I'm gonna to wanna to set my hardware inventory schedule to two days. On production, you can either set it to seven days if you want or one day, it's up to you. If you have a lot more computers, obviously you wanna set it a little longer so it doesn't get bogged down. But for the hardware inventory classes, since I use Lenovo's, or if you use Lenovo's, I should say rather, um, you definitely want to set this class because this version right here, it shows it as the actual model name, like a T460 instead of the model number that Lenovo normally gives you. Okay, let's continue on. Nothing there. Uh, we're not going to set any power management just yet. All right, for the remote tools, we definitely want to have this enabled. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we want to set it to domain. That way, only domain users can connect. Okay, let's look over this. So we do want to grant control permissions, or we do not want to grant control permissions to local administrator groups. Uh, I want to specifically set who is going to get rights to that. So I'll set my SEC admin user account. You can do this uh, in your environment or you can set the local admins. I prefer to have a controlled set though. And it looks like there's nothing really else. Okay. For the software deployment, we'll go ahead and set it to two days as well. Like I said, in your environment, if you have a lot more computers, you can uh, definitely spin it up or spin it down, it's up to you. Software inventory is the same. I'll set mine for two days. I got no problem with that. Okay, I'm not gonna set any inventory types or collect any files. Software metering, we wanna set that as well. And we'll set that to two days. Just like everything else, cool. Software updates, so if you're gonna be pushing out um, updates through here, we're definitely gonna to wanna to have this enabled. We're gonna set it to every two days. The evaluation to every two days as well. Okay. All right, and user device affinity, nothing to change there. So we'll go ahead and okay this. All right. All right, so like I said before, we're gonna to want to add a GPO to add the SCCM admin as a local admin on all machines. So we're gonna go ahead and go in our domain controller. And I'm gonna add a new OU for my groups. So we'll go ahead and right click that, new OU. And I'll go ahead and call this groups. All right. So in here, we're gonna to wanna to create a new group. Okay, I'll call this group SCCM administrators. We'll leave it as a security group. Uh, global is fine. Click OK to that. All right, we're going to open up that group that we just created. We're going to put a description. Uh, we're going to set it to group used for SCCM administration. All right. We'll go ahead and click on the members. And for the members, like I said, we want to add our SCCM admin. And just for grins, we'll go ahead and add my account. All right. We'll click OK to that and then apply is cool all right so go ahead and close out of ad 
and we'll open up a uh, group policy. All right, so in here, we're gonna wanna create a new policy and basically add the SECM administrators as a local admin group to all machines in the domain. The best practice is you don't wanna push out the clients using a domain admin, so we wanna set a local admin for all computers. All right, so within group policy, we're gonna go into computer configurations, policies, window settings, and then restricted groups. All right, and we're gonna wanna add our SCCM administrators group. Clear that, and we're gonna wanna add it to, uh, this group is a member of, we'll go ahead and click on add. And then here we wanna just type in, uh, we wanna add it to the built-in administrator. So we're gonna type in administrators, click okay. Apply, okay, cool. All right, and now you can see that the a SCCM administrators is a member of the built-in administrators. We'll go ahead and check the settings on this and we can verify it right there. So that's the way it should look like, cool? All right. Okay, now we're gonna go into our computer management and we wanna verify that it is actually gonna be a admin or a group within the local admin group. So we'll just check in the settings right now. We'll open up a command prompt and then go ahead and type in the GP update just to make sure that it's actually applying the policy that we created right now. All right, that updated successfully. Go ahead and close this and then reopen it again. And now we can see that the SCCM administrators is part of the local admin group. All right, we'll close that. All right, now back in our SCCM console, we're gonna wanna go to Assets and Compliance, Devices, All right, and now we want to install our client or push out our client to our SQL01 server. Okay, default settings are fine. We'll go ahead and next on that. Close that. That looks good. All right, so now we're going to open up the task manager, go into details, and wait for it. So right there, you can see the CCM setup just popped up. That's what's installing the software center on the local machine. So when you push it out, that's, that's how you verify that it's actually working. If you don't see that, you gotta check your, either your firewall or check if the account that you're pushing SCCM client with is a local admin on the machine. I ran into that many times. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and close that. SCCM finish installing. So now we have a new program. We'll go ahead and open up that software center. All right, so right now it looks like no policies have ran yet. You can still see in the top right corner the IT organization is still, um, still set to default. So in order to run a manual, a manual um, trigger right now, we'll go into the control panels, configuration manager, and then. We'll go ahead and click on the actions. And here we basically just want to run everything just to get it a nice, a nice fresh start. This will manually trigger all cycles instead of waiting for the actual default time that it sets it to. And you can see that my site is set to pack. Okay. We'll click okay to that. All right, get out of there. All right, now we'll go into Software Center again after I ran that that trigger. And so now you can see on the corner, it says the sysadmin channel. So it is pulling the policies from our SCCM server. All right. So there you have it, guys. We went over configuring the basics of SCCM 2012. So if you like this video, go ahead and let me know. Also, if there are other SCCM related videos you'd like me to do, go ahead and let me know in the comment section as well, and I'll try to get on that. Until later, peace out.